here YouTube welcome back to the channel another video on old red our project 1983 Peterbilt 359 now in today's video I thought we'd change it up a little bit do something on the uh, mechanical program here and we're going to change some brake cans on the back end of this truck now all you guys have been following along for the whole project here you know that everything on the back end of this truck's all off of a 2010 Peterbilt uh, cut the frame off took a rear end cut off from a low mileage 2010 Peterbilt and we put it together, we stretched the frame about 32 inches in the process and all the rear axles, suspension, brakes, all that stuff's all off of a 2010 truck that had, I think that truck had 450,000 miles on it or something like that, a fairly low mileage truck that had gotten wrecked. And uh, so anyway, this wasn't really something I really planned on doing, but I've been noticing here lately that sometimes when I release the brakes, one of the brake cans will leak. You hear it back feed through the, through the brake button. And then if you come outside the truck, you hear it leaking out of the service brake purge valve. Okay, so I've got a half can here, so I can kind of show you guys what causes that. So, this is the perk brake side of your brake chamber. There's a big spring in this area here. Uh, it's retracted with this caging bolt here right now but then for the service brake side you've got this rubber diaphragm goes right here you can see here that this you can see here that this port is threaded into this side here so air into this port there's another rubber diaphragm in this side here that when you put air into this port it retracts the spring which retracts this rod right here with this flat side here. And on this side is a service brake side when you apply air here. Okay, so either by air being applied on this diaphragm or this rod pushing is what actually actuates your brakes. So the perk brake, this rod comes out and pushes against your brakes. Service brake, air pushes against this diaphragm here and actuates your brakes. Well, sometimes what happens is this seal around this rod will leak and that's what will cause air to back feed into the service brake line and come out the purge valve when you release the parking brake. So, one of the four brake cans on the back of this truck is doing that. It's leaking air from the perk brake side to the service brake side and then that's why there would be air coming out of the service brake purge valve. Now if you wanted to figure out which one it was, you can go around and pinch off the air lines to each one of your brake cans and figure out which one the leak's coming from. Now in this case, there's three of these brake cans on this truck are all Halidex brake cans. Everything else I've got all uses the Bendex style brake can. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change them all out. That way everything's uniform. I've got the same exact brake can that fits every single drive axle, every single trailer axle, and everything that I have. So we're just going to swap them all over to this style brake can. Uh, they're really kind of a horse apiece. It really doesn't matter which one you use. But I'm just going to go ahead and change them all out. That way that I know that you know I'll have a good service life. I'm not going to have to worry about brake cans on this thing for a very long time. Uh, pusher axle everything's new on that I already put new brake cans on the steer axle so by the time I switch all these out I know I'm not going to have any issues with brake cans leaking for a long time and we're going to be good to go so anyway enough jaw jacking let's get to it hey go ahead and throw some wheel chocks on the front wheel here I don't have a trailer hooked up to the truck to be able to set the brakes on the trailer and I'm going to need to release the brakes so we're going to throw some wheel chocks now you're going to go ahead and release the brakes. Alright, so now there's several different ways you can go about doing these. Uh, I'm not going to say that any one way is the right way or the wrong way. They don't even necessarily do it the exact same way every single time. But I'm going to go ahead and going to back the brake off. Then with the brake backed off, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove the cotter key on the pin here. 
It's nice I can actually tell that the pen is free because it rolls around on me here. That things it seems like them things are only seized up, so that's a nice nice thing there, but then we can go ahead and remove our pen. So that's out. Then we can start removing the brake can, taking these two 15 16 bolts off. This top one here, I wouldn't be able to get an impact on it without removing the slack adjuster, which I really don't want to do. Okay. Top one's loose. Ugh. All right, so top bolts out. Before I take the bottom one out, I'm gonna always forget to disconnect the airline, so let's get the two airlines disconnected. Then I'll get an impact on the bottom bolt there. And it's kind of nice working on this newer stuff. Everything's actually coming apart without a fight. That is unusual for me. Are you freaking kidding me?
Okay, now before we do anything else, there's a couple measurements we want to take. Uh, one thing we want to check is we want to see what the measurement is to the center of the eye here. And it looks like we're five and a half inches, so five, one half to center of the eye. And then we also want to see what our rod length needs to be. So four and a quarter. So we're gonna go four, one quarter rod length. Okay. Now it's a good idea before you take these off to always check and make sure that your rod length's correct to start with before you just copy the old measurement and put it on the new brake cans. Because every once in a while you get a guy, oh shoot, I cut that wrong. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to adjust the brakes. Well, that's not really how it works. What you want is you want your slack adjuster to be 90 degrees to the brake can at your maximum allowed travel. So on a short stroke brake can at two inches of travel, you want your slack adjuster to be at 90 degrees to your brake can. Now, one thing to keep in mind is a lot of times you know, your brake cans will be mounted at an angle, so you're not looking for 90 degrees to the ground, you're looking at 90 degrees from the brake can. So that's one thing to keep in mind there, and these did look correct before I took them off. And these three Halidex cans that were on here, I believe were OEM, so they not really concerned, they should be correct. This one is obviously a replacement because it's different than the other three. So we're we'll going to go ahead and we're we're just double check our our measurements on this one. And yeah, that's the same. Looks like four and a quarter and five and a half. So we're we'll gonna go ahead and write that one on this one as well. Now we can go ahead and we're, we're going to need to reuse these fittings on here so we can go ahead and take them off. Uh, one thing to note on this one, they have a smaller fitting on the park brake one and a larger one on the service brake one. So you can't get the hoses mixed up. So we need to make sure that those go back in the right ones. So just Put a mark on that one, put a mark on that one. That way, I know, but go ahead and we're take these fittings off of here. Then we need to go ahead and remove these clevis pins. For some reason, I don't. Probably gonna have to take this over to the bench vise and get them off there, but we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot here once for shits and giggles, I guess. <clears throat> yep, bench vise. All right, so I did the First one while the camera was charging here for a minute, I went to go clamp this one down in the vise. Why don't you know it? Freaking vise job broke off. Lovely. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to do this one with a pair of vise grips. Generally, a bit of heat goes a long way. I would normally use oxyacetylene for this. It's a lot faster. Both my oxyacetylene torch sets right now need some tanks refilled. So, plumber's torch it is.
All right, so the next thing we're gonna need to do is cut these rods to length. I've got them both marked. See on this one, I went ahead and I threaded the nut all the way down. It's a good thing to do because when you cut this off, if you got a burr rolled thread on there, you can back this nut off and kind of roll that thread back over. It makes it a little easier to thread your stuff on there. But if you cut it off nice and square and you bevel the edges, you know, you really shouldn't have too much trouble getting the nut started on there. These threads tend to get kind of banged up. People throwing these things around parts rooms and stuff like that. So it's kind of a hassle to, to thread that nut down that much thread. So a lot of times I'll just thread the nut off and then I'll thread it back on after I get done cutting it. Put a good bit of anti-seize on there so it's easier to get it back apart in the future. Five and a half. Take your fittings. Um, this one, the larger one, was a service brake. So that's going to be the one closest to the rod. Put a little bit of your thread seal in a choice. Alright, and then it's really just a matter of putting this all back together. So then if you ever have to clock your brake can to a different position to be able to hook up your hoses, right down here on the bottom, that's where your cage bolt is stored. You pop this rubber out here, this goes in here. Find the hole, there you go, 90 degree turn. Pull out. And then you're going to tighten that down until, I mean, that's all the way down. This rod will be sticking all the way out here. And then that cage is a spring on this side. And then after you do that, you can release this band clamp here and then rotate the back half of this can around wherever you need it to be able to hook up your air hoses. 
I've got a video that I think shows how the cage breaks really well. I'll go ahead and I'll put a link in the description down below so you guys check that out if you need that. But I always take these cage bolts out and I store them inside the truck in the toolbox or the jockey box or glove box or wherever you want to put them so that they're out of the weather because they always get seized into this hole right here. So I always like to just pull them out and then I have have them to use them if I need them. Okay, that is better. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so to adjust the brakes, tighten it down until it's tight. Back it off a quarter to a half a turn. That would normally get you in the ballpark. Now I've shown a few other ways to do this in the past, but here's one way. Another way you can mark where your push rod travel is here, which really is on the on the very first thread there. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna apply the brakes. Okay, and you can see we're about one and an eighth of an inch from the first thread there, which is where our mark is. So I'm good with that. Inch and a half to two inches is normally where you wanna be, but I am good with an inch and an eighth so we're gonna leave it there all right so that is one two three four new brake chambers on old red i'll tell you what for something i've done a whole bunch of times there was things i would have expected to have fought me on this that didn't and other things that i wouldn't have expected that did so i guess it just goes to show you you know you just never really know all in all i guess it wasn't that bad but it's done now and we can move on to the next thing. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe down below. Thank you. Have a great day.